I am Juma Nasoro, the program manager at uh, Heri Kenya. Heri Kenya stands for Health and Environmental Research Institute Kenya. We are a community-based organization whose uh, focus is on doing research on health and environment and then designing interventions based on that data so that everything that we are doing uh, is actually based on uh, science. The inspiration behind uh, the found founding of Heri as a community organization was that um, the founders, Dr. Desiree Labo, um, Dr. Francis Mutuku and Dr. Bryson Denga. I've been doing research in uh, Kuala County for a long period of time, over 10 years, and uh, they've been studying um, um, infectious uh, diseases. And uh, what we realized is that um, mosquitoes that um, spread uh, infectious uh, diseases, that is the Aedes aegypti mosquito, we noticed that they were breeding in discarded uh, plastic uh, containers. And once the water is there, it creates a conducive uh, environment for breeding of mosquitoes. So um, having done that as researchers, they felt that it was very important to create a platform whereby um, once we have done the research, we can be able to um, bring together stakeholders and implement um, interventions jointly, interventions that are actually informed by science and uh, that is uh, what led to the founding of uh, Harry. At the beginning we were just uncovering the great burden of these mosquito-borne diseases. You know kids and, and adults were sick in the hospital with fever we were trying to figure out what they were sick with and um, we found out that a lot of them were sick not just with malaria which is quite common but also these mosquito-borne viral infections. There are a lot of things that uh, people don't know about mosquitoes. They always think they are at risk only of malaria, but there are all those other pathogens. He is an entomologist, Bryson's also an entomologist, I'm a physician, and so together, you know, we're focused on both the mosquitoes and the human health aspects. And we started just uncovering this great burden of these diseases. Once you do that, the next question is, well, how are you going to prevent the diseases? How are you going to keep people from getting sick in the community? We are right now bringing a lot of community partners together for what we are calling the Diani Sustainability Collective. Um, which is a framework to actually have community members um, really doing the um, execution and co-design of programs that are going to improve sustainability and environmental health in this region. We've launched the Harry Hub, that is an, our educational um, hub, which is brick and mortar. Um, at the Biashara Center here in Akunda, and that is a place that we're bringing community members and other people interested in learning about health and sustainability and green agriculture and climate change and community work um, to come and learn and grow with us and actually doing a lot of interactive programming so that when people leave the hub there, their capacity is built to actually go and execute circular economies of waste so that they can provide economic opportunities for their community members and then also clean up the waste that's making everyone sick. Plastic is a menace. Plastics, apart from uh, promoting uh, vector diseases, they are also choking our oceans, our water bodies, decreasing the marine ecosystem and this is going to lead to food crisis. And because plastics are non-biodegradable, uh, if they end up uh, polluting the soil, it means that uh, agricultural production is affected and therefore the future generations and even the current generations are going to have uh, suffer from uh, starvation and even the quality of food is affected. A plastic bottle takes approximately 450 years to decompose. Statistics have said that by the year 2050, if we don't take action on plastic litter, then we'll have more plastic than fish in our seas. And this is not somewhere we want to go. We have also been involved in cleaning the beach and the town. Through those efforts, we have been able to collect more than six tons of waste to feel very good about um, that achievement. Working on the environment means that uh, we have a very um, diverse but integrated uh, 
partnerships within the players. So as Harry, our role is science, whereby we do research and based on that data, we, we, we come to the table and uh, tell the other stakeholders and the community, this is what data says, this is what science says, this is how we can move forward. And then another stakeholder is maybe in uh, uh, conservation of uh, of the ocean or the marine space can be able now to come and see this is how I think we can create more um, safe and sustainable marine ecosystem and that way we can be able now to to to, to grow together and that together as stakeholders now when we are working together we are better place to even advise uh, policy makers and our leaders on the policies that we think uh, will be most uh, helpful but the constitution of Kenya uh, provides a right to a clean and healthy environment for all. So the role of NEMA is to ensure that everyone is accorded a clean and healthy environment. And we hope to do more, to bring more impact to the environment and health of communities, not only here in Kuala but beyond. Yeah, and that brings us to the project with Jean, right? Because one of the things we're, we're doing with wonderful artist Jean Shin is we are um, trying to build awareness about the plastic pollution crisis here locally and then also across the world at Stanford where I, where I am and where I work. Um, and so we're hoping by building this beautiful, gigantic ocean wave made out of over 7,000 single-use plastic water bottles. We're going to bring um, awareness to the fact that single-use plastic is terrible, that it ends up choking our oceans, destroying the biodiversity in the ocean, and also food security for us and all of the coastal communities that rely on sustainable fishing for their livelihoods. Um, also, the fact that these are plastic water bottles underscores the fact that most people here do not have safe, reliable access to clean drinking water which ties back to how we first began because it's because they don't have access that they're storing water in these containers that end up breeding the mosquitoes that are making them sick, right? And so if we had safe, reliable access to clean drinking water for everyone here, we wouldn't have all these single-use plastic water bottles polluting the area, being littered everywhere, and breeding mosquitoes. And so with Jean, we, we were hoping that this um, sea change, the name of this beautiful piece, is going to inspire change and we will see the change being here in Diani over the years where there will be less and less plastic pollution in the ocean being burned around the place um, and more and more change towards again a more sustainable healthier Diani. Nara wenye umbo la mawimbi ama wimbi la bahari uliojengwa kwa kutumia chupa za plastiki umezinduliwa mjini Diani katika county ya Kwale. Munara huu umetundikwa katikati mwa muji wa Diani ili kutoa hamasa kwa wakazi na watalii wanaozuru eneo hili dhidi ya kutupa plastiki kiholela. Ukiwa na umbo la wimbi la bahari, munara huu unaashiria kuwa viumbe vya baharini huathirika pakubwa kutokana na plastiki zinazotupwa mijini na kuishia baharini. We're connected by water and I wanted to make this big wave. It's like a tsunami wave ready to crash on us. And ultimately, if we don't solve the plastic pollution crisis, that sea, that wave, that ocean that will be crashing on us will be the plastic debris. And I wanted to make that problem visible. For a long time in my lab, I always dreamed of somehow pairing science and art. I just think that the two are beautiful complements to one another. It has been a great um, experience. As you can see, we've been able to bring on board so many community representatives, community groups that we've partnered with um, to create, uh, to collect the plastics first, to clean them, to cut them and uh, zip them together to prepare the sheets for the um, sea change uh, sculpture. This is an entry point to Diani, so it's going to capture both the residents, the local community, and also the visitors who are coming into Diani. They will see that we have in mind our environment and need to conserve it. Uh, it's a great initiative. Thank you, Kaheri Kenya. Thank you, the county government of Kuala. Thank you, thanks to all the stakeholders involved and thank you to Shen who actually was involved in the setting up the whole morning. And in three years time we are hoping to really have a vibrant um, circular economy here in the uh, South Coast. Great collaborative uh, initiatives among us, uh, Harry Kenya and the uh, other uh, stakeholders and the community. This is something that we've already started and we are hoping to scale it in, the, in a period of three, five, five years. Yeah together yeah. with our partners. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. we're hoping again that 
this sculpture just reminds people about their individual choices and that choices matter, right? Yes. And that we each have power, right? Sometimes we feel powerless, but we all have power to make a change. Yes. A change for the better for the environment, which is a better for our health and the health of our communities, right? Yes. So we're hoping it's a good, strong reminder of that. I do want to create a future that's going to outlive me. I don't want it to end with me and my generation. I want it to keep going. I want us to have a greener, better environment to live for our children and our children's children. So I'm happy to be here and making this change. <laughs>